The July 26, 2006 issue of the Journal of the AMA contains an article about the possible use of higher temperatures, hyperthermia, in the treatment of cancer. They refer to it as the Lance Armstrong effect because of the remarkable success in treating Mr. Armstrong's testicular cancer. It is thought that testicular cancers in particular are sensitive to heat, and so there's a growing interest in the exploration of the use of heat in treating this and other cancers. With us is Dr. Donald Trump, who is chair of the Department of Medicine, vice president for research at the Roswell Park Cancer Center in Buffalo, New York. Welcome, Dr. Trump. Thanks very much. A pleasure to be here. Let's begin by discussing the way in which hyperthermia is being used and considered in cancer treatment today. Well, we've known for a long time that heating cancer cells uh, kills them. And uh, there's been uh, actually decades of research devoted to trying to understand that effect. And there are a number of uh, clinical trials that have been undertaken to try to understand how better to use heat. I guess when most people hear about the possibility of using heat to treat cancer, they think, as I do, how do you do that? You just can't heat up the whole body. You can't put someone in a microwave, so to speak. How do you clinically accomplish the possibility of heating just cancer cells and not damaging normal cells? Well, there are a couple of ways to specifically heat cancer cells. There now are techniques uh, in which you can place uh, radio frequency antennas on the ends of needles, you know, basically small uh, uh, steel wires and administer heat uh, into those wires by using microwaves, you can heat those wires up. So if you put the wire in the tumor, you can heat the tumor. Uh, those have limited uh, application because you have to be able to get to the tumor. But there are, in fact, uh, you know, good results that can be obtained when you specifically heat a tumor like that. You can spare the surrounding normal tissue, but it can't be something that's done uh, for the whole body. For whole body hyperthermia, there are a number of techniques. and. While they don't involve putting uh, individuals in microwaves, they do involve putting them under a number of different sources to heat up the individual, either uh, with radiant heat uh, or uh, basically in a, in a warming oven or a, a warmer, if you will, uh, or by uh, putting the, a body in a, a water bath uh, or covering with hot towels. There are a number of ways to raise the temperature. As we talk about hyperthermia, what kind of temperature range are we talking about before we get into a danger zone? Uh, it, when you consider use directly heating tumors uh, by putting uh, microwave antennas into them, you can achieve temperatures in the 115 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, you know, quite high temperatures that kills those tumor cells. But when we're speaking of heating uh, an entire body, uh, temperatures of 102 to 106 are the targeted temperatures. And as a quick final question, are there any cancers right now for which this treatment has proven to be somewhat at least successful? Well, I mentioned earlier the direct heating uh, by placing microwave antennas into tumors, and that's clearly been shown to be useful in tumors that involve the liver, either primary tumors that start in the liver or tumors that have spread to the liver. Uh, that's probably the best example of heat-destroying tumors. And then there are small uh, studies and encouraging clinical results in a wide variety of tumors uh, that uh, indicates that that this approach uh, does have merit and should be pursued. Well, it's been very helpful to hear you describe this, and uh, you give us some modest hope that we may have another avenue for treatment. We thank you for joining us today. My pleasure.